Hello, hello, hello! Good morning, everyone! Mega love shout out to all the subscribers and followers of this channel. And if you are new to my channel, <laughs> Subscribe to like, share. Don't forget to ring the bell buttons for the next notification. Three, yeah. one. Leave a comment. Subscribe. Four. Subscribe. Oh, my. Today, our lesson is about the concept of a schematic system. And this is Marimath 8, week 1. And this is your teacher, Marike Adam. The development of critical thinking and reasoning is one of the main objectives in learning geometry. To answer the whys, we need clear understanding of postulates, actions, defined terms, definitions, and theorems. To differentiate and illustrate this, we need to understand the mathematical reasoning code, the axiomatic methods, or axiomatic system. An axiomatic system consists of some undefined terms, that's primitive terms, and the list of statements called axioms or postulates concerning the undefined terms. One obtains a mathematical theory by proving new statements called theorems using only the actions or postulates, the logic system, and the previous theorems. Definitions are made in practice in order to be more concise. Most early Greeks may, made a distinction between actions and postulates. postulates. Evidence exists that Euclid made the distinction that an axiom or common notion is an assumption common to all sciences and that a postulate is an assumption peculiar to the particular particular science being studied. Now in the modern times, no distinction is made between the two. An axiom or postulate is an assumed state. So this is from Timothy et al. And okay. <laughs> Okay, so we have here the axiomatic system or the postulate system. So first, we have the four, no? So we have undefined terms. These are concerned, accepted, without definitions. It's relation to the sitting basic geometry. This might include line and point. So for the defined terms, these are simply common agreements as to the meaning of specific concept and are not constructed arbitrarily. Actions or postulates are statements assumed to be true even without proof. Postulate and actions must be consistent, so do not contradict each other. Mutually independent, not one action can be shown to be a cons consequence of the other. Theorems are statements that should be proven by using definitions, postulates, and previously proven theorems. Okay, so we have now undefined terms. So from the previous video, we have already taken up this. So we have point. No, a point does not occupy space. It does not have length, width, and length, and or depth. So an example is point E. So it's single capital letter. It's used to name a point. Then we have line, a collection of continuous points that extends independently in both directions. So we have line M, or we can call this also as line B N. And it extends, no, denoted by segment arrows on both sides. So this is the line. Okay, so from other example of undefined terms is the plane. So this is common, no? So a plane is a set of points contained in a flat surface 
and extends indefinitely in all directions. So a plane is commonly denoted as the closed figure side or a four-sided figure. So this like this is a plane, no? Namely according to points. So you have to put the points on it. Okay. So we have also defined terms. So from the undefined, most defined terms uh well now. Okay, for example, we have space is a set of all points. Then we have collinear points that lie on the same line. So just like this, we call it collinear. So points H, D, and C are collinear. Then we have non-collinear points. So these are points that do not lie on the same plane or line. So we have points L, point N, and point D. These are collinear. Now we have also known as coplanar points that are points that lie on the same plane, while non-coplanar points are points that do not lie in the same plane. Coplanar lines are lines that lie in the same plane. Okay, just like this. These are coplanar points. So we have points R, T, and Y are coplanars, while point Q, R, and Y are non-coplanar. Okay, so other uh, the defined terms is the intersection of geometric figures. It's a set of all points that are not common figure involved. So this we have the intersection of line BM, okay, or BV, the line BV and the line GN. Which uh, is point K. So this is the point of intersection and it's point common to both lines. So the intersection of plane M and N in line K, this one, is a dash line in which a figure that cannot move. So these are this is the intersection. Huh? Or this is the uh, intersection of the plane M and N. All right, next we have postulates and theorems. Postulates are statements that are accepted as true. On the other hand, theorems are statements that should be proven true by using definitions, postulates, and previously proven theorems. Postulates, so we have two points are contained in exactly one line, so these are common postulates. Then every line contains at least two distinct points. If two points are in a plane, then the plane containing these points is also on the plane. Okay, so let, later we will be using this uh, postulates or theory. So every plane contains at least three non collinear points. That's true. Uh, planes postulates are any plane points or the any three points lie at least one plane and uh, any three non-collinear points lie in exactly one plane. So if two distinct planes intersect, then the intersection is a line. If two points are contained in a plane, then the line that is formed by the two points is also contained in the same plane. Okay. All right. So we have here, now, if uh, this is theorem, if two distinct lines intersect, then it can fix then in intersects at exactly one point. So this is here, no? we have uh, the proof for in J or JN and VV or the line that intersects. So uh, if two distinct lines say J and J and V means their intersections at point K here. Okay. So using postulate one, point K is contained in only uh, in only one line, which in turn contradicts are given that we have two distinct, distinct or different lines. So therefore, two lines cannot have more than one intersection, or two distinct lines can have at most one point intersection. So, uh, hindi po dalawa, no? So this one is wrong. So, ito isa lang talaga, no? A line and a point not on the line are contained in the one and only one plane. Now, given line M here, you know, uh, and point L that not lie using postulate to line M contains at least two points, say A, N, and D. So we have N and D here. Okay. So from the definition of non-collinear points, it can be said that points N, D, and L are 
non-collinear. So using postulate 5, this three non-collinear points is only an only plane and postulate 7 m informs n and b is also in the same plane. Okay, we have axioms. Many of the properties of real numbers are assumed to be true, and these statements are called axioms. There are, these algebraic properties are used as reasons to justify the steps in geometric proofs. So these axioms include the substitution principle, the properties of equality, so you know already what are these, and the properties of addition and multiplication, and the properties of order. So these axioms uh, are true. You know, these are justified as true. Okay, so we have here the exostrative example. So what property of equality is used to justify its expression? So if 5x is equal to 125, then x is 25. So that is true multiplication property of equality. If 10 is equal to AB, then AB is equal to 10. That is symmetric property. Then if 35 and measure angle M is equal to A, then M and the measure of angle M is 35. So that's true transitive property. Likewise, look at the following logical sequence of the statements with their supporting reasons in justifying statements. So if X minus 20 is equal to 5 is equal to 10, then X is equal to 70. So the, for our first statement, x minus 20 divided by 5 is equal to 10, that is given. No, that's the reason. x minus 20 is equal to 50. So that's multiplication property of equality. No, so that's, we divided by 5. Or we, both sides, so x minus 1 and then 5 times 10 is 20 or 50. No, 5, oh, 5, 5 times 10 is 50. So that's multiplication property. And then, therefore, if we transpose this or addition through the addition property, we have x is equal to 70. Okay? Okay, so for questions and clarifications, please uh, leave, for questions, leave, please leave your comment at the comment section. Remember, Gratitude is the best attitude. Life is like maths. First, we assume that it's an action. Then we make it a, a postulate. Then it becomes a perfect theorem. That's by my professional soul. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening and for always living there, my students. And to all the followers and subscribers of Teacher um, the channel, or Teacher Marife Adonis channel, um, thank you so much. Uh, happy 30,000, everyone.